This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. As the U.N. General Assembly brings world leaders to New York this week, some will attend the first-ever Climate Ambition Summit Wednesday, focused on efforts to accelerate um, and address the climate—to uh, address the climate crisis. President Biden speaks today at the General Assembly, but will not attend the Climate Summit. This comes after an estimated 75,000 people marched to the United Nations Sunday to demand Biden end fossil fuels. On Monday, activists escalated calls for climate action with one of the largest acts of civil disobedience in a decade. They gathered in Zuccotti Park, the former site of Occupy Wall Street, then surrounded the Federal Reserve Bank, blockading the entrances as they called for an end to the financing of fossil fuel projects. Organizers say 149 were arrested, including climate defiance organizer Riley Hout. This comes as climate protests targeted Citibank and AIG last week for funding fossil fuel projects, and today focus on Bank of America, which the Rainforest Action Network says has poured $279 billion into the fossil fuel industry since the 2015 Paris Agreement to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions. For more, we're joined by Renato Pumarol, organizer with Climate Defenders, one of the groups that's been planning this week's climate change direct action in New York, and Elise Nascimento, the campaign director at New York Communities for change. She was arrested during the protest Monday at the Federal Reserve. We welcome you both. Alise, let's start with you. Talk about why you got arrested yesterday. Talk about the Federal Reserve here in New York. Um, thank you, Amy. First, thank you so much for having me. Um, I, you know, unlike many of my colleagues who uh, blocked the doors yesterday to the Federal Reserve and put their bodies on the line, I was actually not planning to be arrested. Um, I simply grabbed a bullhorn and I contextualized where we were as a number of our colleagues were getting arrested, and I called out the Fed for its responsibility to regulate climate risk as financial risk, and also the responsibility of our elected officials, especially Democrats and financial regulators, and their utter failure uh, in this time of crisis. And the police told me that I could not use a bullhorn, in spite of the fact that we were all using bullhorns, and that if I continued on speaking out, that they would arrest me. And, uh, and I continued on speaking out, because it's important. And then they proceeded to arrest me. So it came as a surprise, but at the same time, uh, it's what you know, we're really trying to bring the urgency of the crisis to the folks who are responsible for it. And the Fed is really failing in its role, not just its role, but really its duty and responsibility to make sure that banks are um, no longer financing new fossil fuel infrastructure. I'd like to bring Renata Pumarol into the conversation. Renata, you, uh, you were participated in the protest. The recent uh, protests have targeted financial institutions like Citibank and BlackRock. Uh, why them? Well, um, BlackRock and, and Citibank are one of the biggest funders of fossil fuels. Citibank is actually the second largest fossil fuel financier in the world and has poured over $333 billion um, into fossil fuels um, and therefore are complicit in the climate chaos that we are experiencing. Uh, your audience know that, you know, climate chaos is not uh, in some distant future. We are facing unprecedented heat waves uh, and floods and fires that have killed uh, tens of thousands of people. And it will only get worse if we do not stop the fossil fuel industry. And the only way to stop the fossil fuel industry is to stop the financing of, uh, of fossil fuels. And that's why this week, uh, hundreds of activists uh, targeted um, the financiers of fossil fuels, like BlackRock, like KKR um, and Citibank, um, and today Bank of America. These are the people who are funding the pipelines that are destroying indigenous communities and threatening our water. Um, they are the ones who are funding petrochemical facilities in black and brown communities and causing high rates of cancer and of asthma. And they are ultimately responsible uh, for, the, for, for climate change 
change and climate chaos that is is threatening our our existence and are threatening you know uh, you know a livable future. And could you talk about how your own uh, relatives in Northeast Brazil are being impacted by the, the climate catastrophe? So actually, uh, this is, uh, I think this question is meant for Alisi, uh, who is from Brazil. I'm, oh, I'm from sorry. Dominican yes. Republic. No oh, I'm worries. Sorry. I'm from the Dominican Republic, though. Um, and, you know, as you know, from the Caribbean, Caribbean islands are, are, are highly threatened by climate change. Uh, we have we have experienced like, you know, uh, stronger hurricanes, um, you know, in the case of Puerto Rico, which was devastated by Hurricane Maria. And we are we are also facing unprecedented heat waves, too. Um, and I'll take it back to Alisi to talk about uh, Brazil and how her country has been affected. Alice, yeah. if you could respond in Brazil. Absolutely. I mean, as you know, as many of you know, of course, Brazil is really at the forefront uh, in the battle to, to save our planet with having the Amazon rainforest uh, there and the indigenous communities really not only fighting for their lives, but fighting for the future of our planet in uh, protecting the Amazon, since they're all, you know, technically considered protected lands under Brazil's constitution. So that's really the only thing that's maintaining that uh, underdeveloped and not uh, and decreasing the levels of deforestation now that Lula has become president. But for me personally, I'm from the northeast of Brazil, Salvador Bahia. Uh, it's very right, right by the equator. Um, uh, it's a it's a city that's right by the beach. And increasingly, you know, in the win in the winters, there's rainy season. And it always rains, but now it's just become uh, there's so many floods. There's uh, my father's house recently, his roof completely collapsed. And, uh, and this is really the impacts of climate change. It's something that we're used to seeing rain in Brazil, but not to this degree. And of course, uh, it impacts everyone, but particularly the folks who are on the front lines who are poor and don't necessarily have the means to rebuild their house or to have shelter. Uh, finally, um, Renata, this comes after 75,000 people marched. The focus was President Biden. Biden and fossil fuels, the banner across the stage. Why President Biden? Uh, we have 20 seconds. Well, uh, Biden, uh, you know, of course, is the president of the United States, the most powerful c powerful country, is also the biggest producer of oil and gas. And Biden can stop uh, new fossil fuel projects right now and has chosen not to do so and has chosen actually even not to attend uh, the climate summit well, and commit himself we're to We're going to leave it there, um, but we're going to continue to cover the climate actions across the week. Renato Pumarol and Elise Nascimento. I'm Amy Goodman. With Juan Gonzalez, thanks for joining us.